There you go. We just got to have the replay just for the recording, just for those on the recording, because they don't see all that stuff before, and those watching on the replay, um, just we do. So, uh, so there you go. A little sneak peek. Thank you, Ricky, for uh, for sharing. Um, thank you, Steve, for sharing on Facebook. Everybody sharing it. So, how is everybody? Give me some, uh, give me some comments. Let me know what you've been doing. Have you had a good weekend? I went to um, something called Expert Empires last week, which was a social media marketing conference all about building businesses via social media, uh, including personal branding. It's all super relevant for acting. It's not just about business. Obviously, I want to grow acts on this. You know, I want to grow it into the biggest platform on the planet for actors. That was why I went. But there's loads of stuff that crosses over with acting, you know, and actually your personal brand. And I'm going to share with you guys tonight my top three takeaways from Expert Empires 2017. There were some great things I took away. There were some things from the conference that I learned how not to do, to be honest with you. Um, there was uh, some great presenters, some not particularly great presenters. Um, but even when you watch something, this is what was interesting, guys. Even when you watch something that isn't actually great, you know, if you go and watch a play that isn't great, or you go and look at the cinema, you watch a film that isn't great, you can still learn so much about how not to do things just as much as when you watch something that's really good and you're like, actually, you know what? That's how I would like to do it. Mary's here as well. Just so you pop up there. Mary Fogg in the house. Um, good evening. Um, so yeah, it was valuable. What have you been doing? Just um, give people like a minute just because there's still a few people piling on now. But give me some comments. What have you been, uh, what have you been up to? Um, Fanny says she's very well. Uh, well, that's good. Tony, what's been going on in the States? Let us know. Um, Stephen Whale. First time on Periscope. Good evening, Steve. Welcome to the group. Um, who's this? Bar someone. What are you doing? Where are you from? So basically, my name's Ross. I'm an actor from Manchester in the UK. And we, uh, I scope, yeah, I'll, I'll say this for everybody, actually, for people who are new. I scope twice a week, once on a Monday night, once on a Wednesday night. And on a Wednesday night, uh, we do a book club. And on a Monday night, which is tonight, we do something called Motivation and Mind Hacks, which is ultimately more motivation mind hacks, positive psychology, things that are going to help you get further in your life and career faster. If you're an actor, you're going to um, get a lot of value from it. But you know what? Even if you're not, you're still going to get value from it because the stuff we're going to talk about tonight applies to every single person on the planet and very often does. It's not exclusive for actors, okay? But this stuff does, um, you know, will, will benefit any actors that are on here. First time on Periscope from India. Amazing. That's awesome. Um, and Patrick says, thanks for your advice this week as well. No problem, Pat. Yeah, Pat was talking about acting classes and kind of like, you know, what to trust, what not to trust. And I'm like, you know, you've got to be vigilant. You know what I'm like on uh, on that. I don't agree with actors who have failed their careers suddenly launching acting schools and promising people success that they never had. It's actually a thing that I hate the most. Um, so you've got to be careful. Uh, if you've got any recommendations for acting classes, put them in the Facebook group. Would love to uh, hear your experiences. So tonight, guys, yeah, I'm going to throw up some, uh, I'm going to throw up some slides as usual. Um, and like I say, this is um, these are my three takeaways from this conference that I went to this week. But although it was on business, like I say, it applies to everybody, particularly actors, because ultimately you are your own brand. You are your own business. That's something that I've learned more and more and more over the years. If you're not getting this part of your career right, it doesn't matter how talented you are. It really doesn't matter. OK, you know, equally, the best market in the world will not do anything for a shit product, okay? You know, if your product is shit, your talent is not there yet, you're not particularly accomplished as an actor, no matter how good your marketing or branding is, it's probably not going to wash. But likewise, you could have the best talent, you know, and if your marketing isn't right and you're not getting yourself in front of the right people for the right reasons, then you're still going to fail, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight, my top three takeaways from this conference, guys, all right? So I'm going uh, to start... We've already shared the scope, haven't we? I'll give people 10 seconds just in case you want to uh, you want to give it another share if you haven't. You just hit the bottom three dots there. You click share. You whack it on Facebook, whack it on Twitter. Um, absolutely appreciate that. The reach on this is pretty sweet, guys, you know, because since I've been getting more and more people watching this and you guys are all so great, we normally get, like, although we don't get 500 or so people joining through the app, we get about 500 views on these Periscopes um, live on an evening. A lot of people watch on the Twitter feed. If you're watching on Twitter right now and you're not actually in the app, drop me a tweet at Act on this TV. I want to know. Uh, and if you're watching on the uh, actually on the desktop rather than the app, again, let me know. Send me a uh, send me a comment now because I think you guys can actually comment. If you're watching on Twitter, I don't think you can. But it's interesting to know where you guys are actually uh, actually watching from. So appreciate you for uh, for joining us tonight. So yeah, number one, guys. All right, this is 
the first biggest takeaway I took away from Expert Empires 2017. Give me some hearts if you agree with this. It really resonated with me. There is nothing more common than unrewarded expertise. There is nothing more common than unrewarded expertise. Give me some hearts or some comments if you think that's you right now. You think you've got expertise, you might be plugging away for years at your acting career, but you don't feel as of yet you are being rewarded. The hearts are coming through. You are being rewarded for the expertise that you have, okay? You might have been in the industry six weeks, you might have been in six years, I mean, it's six decades. Regardless, you will still have amassed expertise regardless of where you are right now. So we need to look at how we maximize that expertise on a reward scale, okay? I feel I don't have the expertise, hence I'm not rewarded. Fanny, when are you ever going to get some self-belief, woman? <laughs> Seriously. What you've got to do? Okay, this is a little interesting. I want, I want people to just do something for me right now, okay? This is an interesting little mind hack that I don't think I mentioned before. But this is useful for you to know, okay? And this is all about your unconscious, ultimately ruling your conscious. So Fanny's saying she's a realist. I don't think you are, Fanny. I think this is what you're doing, right? Most people in life are like, I will be happy when I am rich, you know? Give me some hearts if you ever said that before. I'll be happy when I am rich. I'll be happy when I've got more money. Now, what you're doing there, you might think actually you're focusing on what you want, okay? But actually what you're doing by saying, I'll be happy when I am rich, on a subconscious level, you are actually telling yourself you are poor. And that's the same with anything. So by saying, I will be happy when I have an acting job, I will be happy when I have whatever, what you're actually telling yourself on a subconscious level is I don't have that thing. And trust me, if you are focusing on the things you don't have, you're only gonna get more of the things you don't have. Okay, as opposed to if you focus on, I have an abundance of talent that will be recognized and I'm going to use it, you know, then actually, well, your conscious and your subconscious is really reinforcing the same thing. But by saying, I'll be happy when I'm rich or I'll be happy when I have this or I'll be happy when I have that car, on a subconscious level, you're actually saying, I am not that thing yet. And it's going to be much harder for you to actually get towards that thing. So you've got to be careful what you're telling yourself. So by saying you're a realist, is almost like saying, you know, it's okay to fail. It's okay to not want more because I'm just being realistic. You know, I'm absolutely aware you have to be realistic to an extent. There's no point in being completely delusional, but not to the point where it's disempowering you, okay? Um, so just be aware of that. A little bit of a sidetrack, but yeah, be careful what you're telling your subconscious on a daily basis. So there's nothing more common than unrewarded expertise, guys, all right? I want you to ask yourself this. How is your expertise as an actor being rewarded right now, all right? Give me some marks out of 10, okay? I personally like being unrealistic sometimes. You should be. You should be, Tony. You People need to be unreasonable in a positive way, mate, okay? Now, you can be unreasonable in a really positive way. I've said this before. It is massively unreasonable for me to think that I can go to a switch on the wall, click it, and the light will come on. It's so unreasonable to think that you know, could possibly happen. And we said this before, Thomas Edison never went, oh, that's unreasonable, so I'm not going to bother trying. He might have tried over a thousand times, but he did it eventually. It's massively unreasonable for me to think, you know what, I can just shape a big piece of steel into a tube, whack a couple of wings on it, you know, put 200 people on it and fly it to the other side of the world. It's so unreasonable. That's not being realistic, Fanny, is it? Do you think the Wright brothers were being realistic when they thought about that? I don't think so. So sometimes being realistic and, and reasonable is bullshit. We've got to be a little bit reckless, a little bit unrealistic, and a little bit unreasonable. Um, it's being realistic with where you're right now. Well, it's also, you know, being slightly unrealistic about where you what you know where you want to be heading to. Definitely, I think we need to start focusing more on where we're going rather than actually where we are and where we've been. Sometimes you need to focus on where you've been to look how far you've come on a journey. Um but actually, what it ties into the next couple of points that I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk about. So let's carry on with this. I think you'll you'll uh, you'll understand in a sec. So yeah, so give me some marks out of ten, guys. Where do you think you are on the reward scale in terms of expertise you've got to the reward you're having right now? What do you think? Give me some marks. You can be realistic or you can be unrealistic. It's completely up to you. And those listening on the replay and the audio experience as well, massively appreciate you. Do this in your head. Give yourself a mark 
out of 10 right now for where you think you are in accordance to expertise to reward. So Fanny's saying a one or a two. Dawn's saying a four. I think, you know, I think you have got massive expertise, Fanny. You know, you, you, you absolutely have. And in terms of like your, uh, you know, your improvisational background, I saw you put another video out last night. You, you know, you've got to the point now where I don't think you care that much about what people think of you when you're putting stuff out, which is a great place to be. And then the more of those you do, the more expertise you have. And in terms of your reward, I think you're probably right. You're probably not being rewarded as much, but we're going to look at why that is in a second. Um, so Carrie Ann says a one or a two. Guys, you don't feel like you're being rewarded at all, do you? Uh, but this is good, okay? This is just checking in with ourselves. This is sometimes really good to know. This is really hard. I'm going with six across everything I'm trying to do. This is Carrie May. Um, says no way. Dawn says, no way, Fanny. You're way higher than one or a two. I don't know. I think in terms of actually the reward the reward you, uh, you are getting, Fanny, you should be getting more reward. I just don't know if you're going for the right stuff. I'm going for a solid five. Uh, who is that? Oh, I'm so sorry. My eyes aren't great. I, I can't read the username sometimes. I couldn't give it a mark, but I've come a long way mentally and personally over the past year, says Stee. Um, I love your videos. You're brilliant, Fanny, says uh, Jen, I think. Um, yeah, I think you should be getting rewarded more. I think a lot of people should be getting rewarded more. But I think sometimes you're a little bit afraid to ask the right people for the reward. Again, because you're being too realistic. All right. So why do you think, I've got on the slide there, why do you think that you're not being rewarded as well as you could be. And I've put a few points down here. For those on the audio experience, I'll read them to you now. So I've said, are casting directors aware of you? First of all, aware of you. Um, so Tony says a three, but he's starting to see the seeds come up. So he's a seven. Um, three mainly, uh, or four, says Ricky. What do you think it is? Are casting directors aware of you, first of all? One thing I learned at Expo Empires is, again, you can have the best products in the world, but if people aren't aware of you, it is pointless, okay? You are never going to sell it to anybody. Two, are you packaging your product well enough? This is something I ask myself all the time. I actually, I'm going to talk to you all about Act on This and the way I think I've been marketing it and where I think I've been falling down in a minute because I've realized I had a huge jolt of self-awareness at this conference that I really have fallen down in areas of marketing acts on this and really kind of, you know, explaining the value actors are going to get from it. No, casting directors are aware of me. That's a massive downfall on my part. As in what, Fanny? So, so casting directors are aware of you, but what, you're not maximizing on those connections? Do you think that's what it is? They're aware of you, but you're not actually asking them for what you want. Um, and I want to know what value you are offering the acting community, guys. Because again, if you're just staying in your bedroom... Uh, oh, no, they don't know I exist, says Fanny. There you go. Well, that's it. That's that, I think that's a st stumbling block for many, many people. They're afraid to put themselves out there for what people will think of them. They did a whole periscope on this, didn't we? And then a video that went a bit viral on this as well. If you go on to uh, the apps on this Twitter feed, you might see it on there. Um, but yeah, you know, awareness is absolutely critical. I'm terrible at asking for what I want, says Carrie May. Um Patrick says attends workshops when they are oh attend workshops when they are in attendance. Funny, so yeah, Patrick's saying you should go to more workshops. And um, but yeah, awareness is absolutely critical. Attention ultimately is critical, and that's why I'm so massive on social media. It's why I'm pushing you guys all the time to get on Instagram. It's going to be one of the biggest platforms like for attention in the next two years. Get there now before the people are utilizing it. You will dominate if you do commit yourself to it properly. And uh, so yeah, you've got to look at awareness, how you're packaging your product, which is you. Um, you know, and what value you are offering the acting community. Are you putting yourself out there? You know, are you, uh, you know, creating your own material? Are you entertaining people ultimately so that they will want to bring you in for stuff? Um, so there were three points that I was like, I had to ask myself in my business when I was at this conference, you know, um, are actors aware of me? Are actors aware of acts on this? You know, obviously if you're here now, you are, but there's a lot of people who aren't. You know, am I packaging my product well enough? Am I explaining to actors what they're going to get if they join the community and become part of Act On This? Um, you know, are you explaining to casting directors what they're going to get if they bring you in for a job? I feel I'm not good enough, so I've started collecting goods like websites and followers, etc. Yeah, see, a lot of people use that, Fanny. You've got to be careful as well, guys. Implementation, I always say, is the key. If you are just like, you know what? I'll apply for that role or that agent when I've got this website done or where I've got this social media profile done or where I've got these headshots done or I've got this showreel done, blah, 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 blah. It's just a high level of procrastination and it's using practicality, you know, to justify your fear ultimately. You know, it is just fear dressed up as that practicality. You've got to be really careful. DNA acting is here. First day on Periscope. Massive welcome to you. 
Um, we're just looking at um, actors' expertise in terms of their expertise they have to how much reward they're getting right now. And a lot of people do not feel they are getting the reward they deserve. Or a lot of people are being too realistic about what they do deserve. Um, having massive connection issues, says Ricky. Unfortunately, mate, that's Periscope's fault and their servers. Just X out, mate, and, um, and jump back in. Hopefully, it'll, uh, it'll clear up for you. Um, the replay won't be affected because um, I record it locally, so you're all good. So, yeah, ask yourself those three questions, guys, okay? If you don't feel your reward is where it needs to be right now, ultimately, our casting directors, and not just casting directors, you know, directors, producers, writers, etc., etc., anyone in the industry at a high level, are they aware of you? Are you packaging your product well enough? You know, and that's in terms of uh, of branding, in terms of, um, I mean, branding ultimately, you know what, guys, I think personal branding, people don't know what it means, okay? Your personal brand is ultimately what people say about you when you are not around. That's your brand, what you stand for, what values, you know, you stand for, the standards you stand for. Have a think about that. How are you portraying yourself and how are you being portrayed within the industry? And then look at what value you are offering the acting industry. And if you can value more, if you can add more value, I think you're going to get more traction. How do we find that out then? Um, as in, uh, well, I mean, ultimately, you can ask people, Fanny, you know, and a lot of people do that in the Facebook group. They're like, look, how do you find out if it's behind our backs? Because you should hear through the, through the grapevine what people are saying about you if you're self-aware. Um, ultimately as well, don't don't take everything people say about you behind your back personally or like right that's it if one person like negs on you and nine people are positive about you you probably end up focusing on the one person who's been negative as opposed to the nine people who've like yeah fanny's amazing we all do that you go for a job um those in day jobs you know you'll go for a an appraisal your boss will be like yeah you're amazing at this 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 and this but you could pick up on that and then we walk out of that room going oh shit I'm so terrible at that thing, as opposed to let's celebrate all those things you just said I'm amazing at. Um, so you got to be careful of, uh, of exactly what you take on board as well. Uh, that's pretty much been my day job today, says Gary May. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So that's the first takeaway, guys, for me, was that there is nothing more common than unrewarded expertise. That's what I took away as my first takeaway from this conference. Takeaway number two, okay, is this. And this is really interesting psychology. I hope you're going to enjoy this a little bit. And this is going to help all of those. Give me some hearts if you're single and you're looking for a relationship. Not, not with me. It's not a dating thing. But this is something called the 12 steps of intimacy, okay? And if you screw this up in your relationships in any walk of life, you're going to fail, okay? And I'd heard of this, but I'd not really learned about it in depth at all. And we looked at this at the conference in terms of a customer journey, okay? So how you can give value to another person in order for them to, uh, you know, ultimately get more intimate with you. And that doesn't mean necessarily in that sense, in your in a personal sense, but in terms of relationships, in business, in acting, you and your agent, you and casting directors, lots and lots of different things. And these are, well, these are eight of the 12 steps. You can go and look up the other four because they get a bit intimate and a little bit blue for a uh, for a Monday night. But let me share with you, um, I'll share this with you first, actually. Yeah, I said in any business, whether you are selling a product or selling yourself as an actor, you cannot rush straight in and expect people to buy. It's literally like going up to a girl in a bar and rather than introducing yourself, it's like getting down on one knee and asking them to marry you straight away. They're going to be freaked out. You will become creepy if that's what you're doing. So here are nine, actually, of the 12 steps of intimacy. Okay, that I want you to learn about tonight. And it all begins with eye to body. So this is if you were going to go out and, you know, find a potential partner. These are the steps you would probably have to go through in order to uh, to move through into a relationship. I always expect people to buy immediately, always. Not in a relationship, by the way, just in acting, says Fanny. Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people just expect that that's, that's the way it should be. I can see... What little blue may mean here, says <laughs> Steve. So yeah, so it starts, guys, with eye to body, okay? So that is when you see someone in a bar or in a shop or whatever, you're like, wow, I'm attracted to this person, okay? Then it moves through to eye to eye, voice to voice, hand to hand, hand to shoulder, hand to waist, face to face, hand to head, 
hand to body, and then it moves all the way through, and it ends up genitals to genitals, to be completely blunt. Um, so yeah, steps 10 to 12, get a little blue. Won't go straight into that. But remember this when you are marketing yourself to anybody, okay? If you are an actor, did you? has anyone ever been to a networking meeting like after a showcase? Oh, God, and I hate it. I hated it at drama school. Because it was like, right, I've now got to go out after this showcase I've just done and talk to all these casting directors and these agents. And really, you know why you're all there. You can't walk up to an agent and go, so what do you think about me? Are you going to take me on? But that's ultimately what you want to say. But if you did say that, you're just going to freak people out. Now, the rule is, okay, when you, the rule is with this, you can skip one step. You can even skip two steps. So rather than going from eye to body, then through to eye to eye and voice to voice, you could start with voice to voice. You have skipped two steps. However, if you skip more than two steps, you've screwed it up. It's literally, you wouldn't walk up to somebody in a bar. So say, for instance, you missed, you skipped three steps in this. You can't walk up to a girl in a bar and go straight for hand to hand. It's going to freak them out a little bit. You couldn't go, you know, face to face. You know, I can't come up and put my hand to your head. You can be like, what the hell are you doing? Get off me. Yeah, so many actors think that's, you know, that's what they've got to do. They've got to go straight in to an agent, bang, for the kill. They're going straight for hand to body, you know, or even beyond that. It's for a casting director, bang, give me a part, give me a part. And I know from experience with working with casting directors and people in the industry, they just hate it. Okay, so you've got to go through these steps of intimacy. Now, for you, the equivalent of eye to body is probably going to be something like, I don't know, maybe liking somebody's tweet on social media, liking an Instagram post. You know, then voice to voice might be replying to that Instagram post. Fanny says she's straight into the genitals with agents. (laughs) You've got to warm people up. And this is the same in business, but also it completely relates to your acting career. Um, so you can't go straight to hand to genitals with an agent, Fanny, because I think you're gonna you're gonna have problems there. Definitely, Stephen says, behave yourself. Um, but I just thought this journey here was incredibly interesting. Has anyone ever heard of this before? Because it's something that that's really uh... so we have to flirt, says Fanny. Yes, exactly. These are the best analogies ever, says Tony. But this is it. And this is scientifically proven, right? This is really based. Just Google 12 Steps of Intimacy. There's a whole book on it. You know what? We might even do it for a book club. Um, But it is really interesting. And if you ever want to, you know, if you ever think that person's being creepy, or if you ever think, am I being creepy? Not me, as in you're asking yourself the question, is the girl or boy going to think I'm creepy if I do this? Just have a little look at how many steps you think you're jumping. And remember, you can only ever skip two. If you skip more than that, you're done, okay? I know there are apps like Tinder that probably (laughs) skip. Well, as you know, they probably don't skip. They just go through all 12 in a day. I think that's what a lot of of people on things like dating apps like Tinder do. Um, But yeah, be aware of this. You've almost, yeah, so Fanny says you've got to flirt a bit. You've almost got to flirt um, in all walks of life to cement relationships and actually make them solid. If you're just going straight in for the kill every, every time, That's probably why you're not getting the value that you think you should be getting from your expertise. Unless, like, you're absolutely exceptional and you happen to just go straight for that, you know, hand-to-head or hand-to-body contact at the perfect time, you know, where a casting director is looking for someone who's exactly like you and they might let you off. But just be aware of, um, you know, of that. You know, you've got to go through these stages of courtship almost in order to build a proper relationship that's gonna last okay so real talk there i put there on that slide skip more than two steps and you are gonna fail okay um i'm gonna put a um a slide deck up on the replay by the way guys i can see people taking a few screenshots uh, screenshots but if you um if you wait till tomorrow if you're watching live go to actsonthis.tv you'll see this replay on the home page you can click and you can download the pdf document that i'm using tonight so you don't need to worry about taking screenshots now unless you want to so it's totally cool so that was point number 2 give me some hearts if you like that i think it's interesting isn't it 12 steps of intimacy works across everything in your life not just getting a boyfriend or a girlfriend literally professional relationships influencing people don't creep them out. Just don't be creepy. But it was really interesting for me to uh, to kind of discover that in more detail at the conference because I was aware of it, 
never really looked at it in any detail at all. So that was point number two. Just to recap, I'll just go onto that slide. You have to respect the 12 steps of intimacy, okay? So make sure you are respecting those in your work, personal life, whatever. It's hard for me not to be creepy, says Steve. <laughs> just make sure you're not skipping any steps, Steve. You won't be creepy, mate. You'll be, uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Now, point number three. This was the biggest takeaway for me of the whole event, okay? Don't ever rest on your laurels or get complacent, okay? Who's ever... Th Give me some answers if you ever think you've been complacent. And whether you're complacent, maybe now. I want to give you a jolt of self-awareness. The jolt of self-awareness that I got from a business mentor of mine who effectively, verbally, right hooks me in the jaw in front of 800 people. So the room felt pretty much silent when I asked a question to him and he replied. Um, and man, it hurt. It bruised but I was so grateful a couple of hours later. I was so grateful for the answer that he gave me. Now, my point was, guys, all right, that I said before, you know where I want to go with acts on this, okay? It's literally, it's everything to me. It's just as important as my acting career, my voiceover career, and everything else. Act on this.tv has been a project of mine for six years, and I want to grow it into the biggest platform on the planet for actors, okay, to bring a movement of actors who are positive, inspired, motivated together and give them access to the greatest minds in the industry so you guys can reverse engineer the success that the greatest minds have had and experience it for yourselves, okay? Now, I believe, whether this is just the crazy self-belief, it, uh, it's, not, it's not arrogance at all. I genuinely put my heart and soul into the content that I produce and acts on this. The premium content, particularly for those who pay for the premium membership, so the multi-camera interviews with top actors, agents, casting directors, you know, the podcasts that I do, um, everything, I try and put everything in it. And I feel I am doing a really good job. I feel some of the content that I put out is literally the best, particularly in the UK, of its type. I don't think anybody gets the names that I get on and produces the features as, uh, you know, a higher quality that I produce. However, just because I think it's already of a super high quality, I was like, I'm potentially not competing against myself as much as I should be. So although I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty much doing the best that's out there, that doesn't mean I should stop trying to get better and the thing for me was i've got there's about i don't know, there's a few hundred premium members on acts on this.tv however there are 2000 free members currently signed up to the website and i was asking my business mentor i was like look how do i convince these people because i know those who would convert from free to premium and pay just it's two pound fifty a week, guys. It's so cheap. And like I said, you know, the money the money's a real force for good. We donate so much to charity. How can I convince these people? Because I know it's going to really benefit their career to go from free to premium. And Gary Vaynerchuk basically turned around to me and he said, Listen, mate, if the content was as good as you were saying it is, they would already be premium. And I was like, oh my God. Like, you've probably got a point. Could it be better? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, we should always strive for constant improvement. Um, and he wasn't saying that it's not good enough, I'm not good enough. He was saying something along the way from converting people from free to premium is not good enough. And I had no choice, and I completely agree right now. That has to be the case. I don't think it's the product, because I think the product gives massive value to those who invest in it. And anyone in it on here who is premium will know the quality of the product that's out there, the stuff you will learn. You know, if you basically want to hear from the horse's mouth of the biggest casting directors in the industry, those who cast Doctor Who, Mr. Selfridge, Broadchurch, massive, massive BAFTA-winning stuff, casting directors that would be a dream for you to get in front of. If you basically want to hear an hour, hour and 15, hour and 20-minute conversation, sometimes longer, with these people telling you exactly how you get in the room with them, then you know already the value in that. But my message, obviously, or the packaging of the product, like we mentioned on the last, on the last point in the last slides, obviously isn't resonating enough because I know there could be hundreds, potentially thousands more people who would benefit from going premium and getting that knowledge. Now, it's all great for those who have already gone premium because um, you, you're getting the edge over everyone who isn't. 
So it's almost like you probably don't want me to tell other people about it because then you get to benefit from all that information. You're like, well, actually, keep quiet about it because it gives me the edge over everybody else. For me to build this community into the biggest community on the planet, I have to generate revenue. So I've got to convince other people of the value proposition they're going to get from it. But I realized as that room felt silent, you know, fell silent, and it was that a real ouch moment. People have been putting comments like, ouch. It was like, oh, my pride was battered. But I was like, I can't actually argue against this guy because what he said is completely true. Maybe I'd been resting on my laurels and getting complacent that because I thought I was already producing the best, that I didn't need to get better. So I want people to ask themselves, you know, maybe you think you're already at a great level as an actor and you should be getting rewarded like we mentioned before, but you're not because you've actually got lazy and a bit complacent. And we're all so guilty of that sometimes. So I put on this slide here... um, Tony says, that's badass. You got to chat with Gary. I did for quite a while as well. Um, and then I, we hugged it out over email, Tony. I've emailed him a few times. It was all fine. He even replied to me on his wife's birthday. Um, so it's all fine now. We've, we've hugged it all out. It was good. I was very grateful for his advice. But I said there, yeah, on this slide, for those on the audio experience I've written, I had a big awakening when a business mentor of mine questioned my complacency. I realized that I really needed to hear this. Although I believe I already produced the very best content in the ads industry on ads on this, could I do better? Heck yes, I could. And now I will. And I came away from it so pumped and motivated after I'd got over that initial, like, oh my God, Gary's like a hero of mine and he's basically just smashed me in the face. Um, I just got complacent. And so like my manifesto and like my promise to you guys now is if you invest in me and you go, you know what, I absolutely trust you. And I hope you do trust the value that I give. I wouldn't be on here at 10 o'clock at night try to help you guys if um if my intention wasn't pure but if you like you know if you do believe in that and you really want to help me you know take this to the next level um please try out the premium content on ads on this i know it's maybe not that obvious because i hate the hard sell my point to gary was like gary mate Thankfully, I'm so grateful. I'm earning so well. Not, I don't want to say so much because that's that just sounds ridiculous. I'm sorry about that. I'm earning enough out of my acting career and my voiceover. I don't have to sell any of this stuff because I feel like I am walking my talk. So what I'm telling you guys to do is not come from a bullshit place of like, oh, I'm just going to teach you how to do what I've never had because I hate that. It's my biggest pet hate. Actors who fuck their careers up and then decide they're going to make some money out of actors who are desperate by showing them how to have the success they never had. I despise it. So I feel that I'm working enough in my acting career. I've just booked a, a, uh, a role on a, a brand new BBC One drama. You know, I did three voiceovers today. I'm constantly working. That's not to say, look at me, look at me. It's just like, I'm genuinely trying to help you guys because I'm having success, and I don't need to charge for everything on the site. So the stuff that I do charge for, I don't want to hard sell anyone on because I, I'm not. That's not authentic. Um, so my point to Gary was like, you know, how do I convince these guys to actually believe in me and trust in me to actually upgrade their accounts without giving them the hard sell and going, guys, you've got to do this and you know, promising you loads of bullshit because I hate that. Um, but if you do believe in me, please, um, if you're already a premium member. I could massively do with you spreading the word about it and just helping me because I don't want to have to do the hard sell myself. I think word of mouth is the best way to get the message across. And if you're not a premium member, give me a chance. Sign up for a month. You can always cancel after a month if you don't like it. You're like, it's not valuable. It's 10 quid a month. It's £2.50 a week. It's less than a cup of coffee a week. And you'll get access to 150 hours worth of, I mean, literally the biggest guys in the industry. Andy Pryor, Kelly Valentine Henry, Victor Jenkins... Jill Trevelyk, who cast Downton Abbey, BAFTA-winning actors, actresses from all walks of life, those who haven't been at drama school, those who have been to drama school but have still made it and won BAFTAs. I mean, fucking hell, like Ruth Madeley never went to drama school. She's now won the breakthrough Brit BAFTA. Um, it's like navigating shark-infested waters in this industry, says Pat. Well, hopefully I'm giving you, I'll give you some skills, Pat, and a, uh, you know, a... Um, you know, a weapon to, <laughs> to fight back, mate. Um, but it was just a massive jolt of... of um, of self-awareness that Gary Vaynerchuk gave me. I was like, you, you, you're so right, mate. And I don't think everything Gary says is right. I'm certainly not, a, whatever he says is goes. I don't think what anyone ever says should go like full stop. You should always question people. But the guy, you know, does run a $150 million 
ad agency and kind of knows what he's talking about. And I think he is authentic. He doesn't hard sell people on stuff. So, you know, I have to take that on board. But just take that on board yourself. Just like, you know, are you getting complacent in your acting career? Are you getting complacent in how much marketing you're doing of yourself? Are you leaving it to your agent and you're like, no, oh, you know, fuck it, they'll do all the work for me? Because that's that's not how it works. You know, one thing I do pride myself on is being prolific in the content I'm putting out and actually my quest to work with my both, well, both my voiceover agent and my acting agent. I've got like three voiceover agents in the same agency. Um, but if you follow my Instagram story as well on Instagram, at Act on this TV, you'll see them today. You'll, see, you'll actually see me as well recording with Chris, the sound engineer, the song Dancing on My Own in the style of Alan Partridge. It's ridiculous. Um, feeling motivated says... Oh, I missed the username, but I'm glad you're feeling motivated. Massively appreciate you being here. It's a whole point in this. Tonight's M Monday's Periscopes are titled Motivation and Mind Hacks. So I'm really, I'm super grateful you are motivated. So yeah, you know, could we do better regardless of how, how good we're doing or we feel we're doing or the stuff we're putting out there? Of course we could. And I promise you guys, um, I'm up in my game. I'm only going to get better for you and bring you more and more value. And if you are prepared to, you know, bet on me and invest a little bit of skin in the game for that 10 quid a month i swear i'm going to over deliver like way more than you could ever imagine um so i want to end on this okay so so it ultimately ultimately comes out of continual growth guys and this was just a quote from benjamin franklin and he says look without continual growth and progress because progress is the thing that makes us feel fulfilled guys if you're feeling sad right now or you're a bit down a bit depressed it's because you're not feeling that you're progressing in life. We feel most fulfilled when we progress. So Benjamin says, without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. Okay? Without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success, which ultimately is what we all want, and it's different for every one of us. It means something completely different to us all. But without aiming for continual growth, we're never going to get there. And success is ultimately going to have no meaning. You're an inspiring guy with great intentions. Can't wait to see what's in store for you, Ross, says Tony. Well, you are as well, Tony. Make sure you're following Tony Rossi um, on, uh, on Twitter and, uh, and Facebook as well. He does a little, uh, he does a little Periscope-style thing, a Facebook Live video every Sunday. That Tony, I'm generally out on my... do a half marathon every Sunday, mate. I'm generally out on my run, but I try and watch the replay. Um, or I do try and catch you live um, when I can. So, uh, so to recap, I'm just going to jump right back to through these slides. It's point number one, guys, to recap. One, there is nothing more uncommon than unrewarded expertise, all right? So if you feel your, your expertise is being unrewarded right now, have a little look at what you are doing and where you might be falling down, okay? And that could be on any of these three things, whether casting directors are aware of you, whether you're packaging your product well enough, whether you're actually telling people about the value of you, why they should have you in, what you have to offer, um, and what value are you offering the, uh, the acting community as a whole, okay? Then point number two for me was you have to respect the 12 sets of intimacy. Remember, you can't miss more than two of these steps out. If you go straight and you jump three steps, you're failing. You're going to freak people out. You're going to come across creepy and you're done for. Okay, People ain't going to want you in the room because you're going to scare them. Um, and then number four, uh, number four, number three, was um, don't ever rest on your laurels or get complacent. Um, and I definitely, I know I've been guilty of that purely because of like, I think, you know, schedule, busyness. Sometimes it's like, you know, that's the point now I've realized I can't, I absolutely can't take acts on this any further on my own. I absolutely need you guys. And you'll notice in the Facebook group, I um, I put a post out yesterday looking for 20 already premium members to work with me. And I want to create, maybe uh, there's a few more than 20 people. There's probably 30 people have actually volunteered now. Uh, if you're a premium member already or you prepare to sign up and to be a premium member and you want to be part of this small little mastermind group that I want to, I want to create, I want to create like a focus group of just premium members who are going to feed back to me honestly what we can do to grow this community, grow this movement. And in exchange, I'm going to try and deliver you guys some awesome stuff. And that'll be everything from exclusive webinars with industry guests that just aren't public. They're just available to you. Uh, there's going to be some swag, so some T-shirts, you know, some motivational mugs, posters, act on this you know, merchandise you're going to get for free. Um, and also maybe even affiliate schemes. 
uh, where if you will, you know, you will authentically promote what we're doing within the community, um, then you will get a share of the revenue that's raised as well. Um, so there's loads of stuff. And Tony, I did. Thank you so much, mate. I got your email about helping me out as a virtual assistant type stuff. Um, I was at that conference last week, so I've not had a chance to really kind of go over all my emails and stuff. But definitely, the minute I'm like, I've got an opportunity for you to help me with, mate, I'm going to be reaching out to you like straight away. Do really, really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, we just need to support each other, guys, ultimately. And anything I can possibly do for you, um, let me know. Very appropriate that you voice the personal like a real life knight, says Bobby. Yes, yeah, Bobby, no way do you know that, mate. Yes, yeah, so I did a, I did an animation. There's 72 episodes of an animation exclusively for Netflix last year called Wakfu. And I play a knight, yeah, called Personal. He's crazy. He's absolutely crazy. And he just shouts a lot and uh, gets into a lot of bother, trying to impress the girls and always gets beaten up. It's a semi-biopical piece based on my life story. Um, so uh, so that's that, that quote again, guys. Without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement and success have no meaning um massively appreciate you being here i'm gonna be uh back on wednesday night i've got a slide up there for those in the audio experience it says join me next time on periscope mondays 9 p.m uk time motivation and mind hacks wednesdays 9 p.m uk time for the book club i don't know what book club we're going to be doing i don't know what book we're doing for me i haven't chosen it yet but if you've got any suggestions shout up in the facebook group facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this tv make sure you follow me on periscope instagram and twitter it's always at act on this tv across all social media networks please get involved with instagram guys it's such good fun i'm posting to my story every day on instagram um Loads of the actors in this group right now are posting to their stories on Instagram every day. I know Mike's a big uh, Instagrammer. Fanny's a big Instagrammer. Um, it's just so good to see. Um, do you know what? Instagram really helps for those 12 steps of intimacy because you get to see people for real people. I'm going to come on camera now, by the way. I feel like I've, uh, I've missed you guys. Um, I've just been putting slides up all night. Um, but yeah, I feel Instagram is awesome. Um, thank you for all the comments, people saying nice things about me. Appreciate that. I didn't have time to read them all then. Um, but yeah, I feel Instagram is awesome for showing behind the scenes and for people to actually get to know you for who you are. I like looking at other Instagrammers, not so good for putting me up there. Jen, get yourself up there. Seriously, like just just feel the fear and do it anyway, all right? Um, somebody got a haircut. I think I did get a bit of a haircut last week before the conference, Bobby. Yeah, it's a bit short. I always burn up under these lights as well. I'm always like, look at that. Like I've been drinking whilst I've been on, on like the slides. I haven't. It's not like I've just downed a bottle of wine. I've got rosy cheeks. Um, it's just because I've got some studio lights here and they get really hot. Um, but yeah, uh, Instagram, like, I just love it. And it just as a platform, I keep updating you. When we first started and I was promoting Instagram, 500 million users. I updated you last week, 700 million users now. The, the uh, opportunity for attention it's just incredible, guys. So incredible. You've got to be utilizing it. So get out of your comfort zone. Post your stories. Tag me at Act On This in your stories. I'll watch you. I'll like your posts. I'll support you. I'll comment. Um, and if I can help you with anything, let me know. Seriously, and that applies to everybody. Anyone, like, I, I can't reply straight away, but I always reply. If you if you ever need anything and you just email ross at actonthis.tv, it might take me two weeks to get back to you, but I'll get back to you. Um, good night. Thanks again for your amazing insights. So inspired. Gina's been here. Gina, I didn't know you were here. Good to see you. Oh, well, hear from, well, see your text. Um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. So I'm going to be uh, yeah back on Wednesday. Join us again Wednesday night. Like I say, hit me up in the Facebook group if you need anything. Ross at actonlist.tv if you need anything. And ultimately, uh, yeah, all I ask from you guys is, you know, if you feel you're getting value from these for free, doesn't matter if you're free or a premium member on the site, just spread the word for me. Send some tweets out send some Instagram posts out, record a couple of videos, I don't know, just, you know, whatever um, that you think would be useful to help because I, I absolutely am at the point where I just can't do it on my own anymore. I can't make this community any bigger or have any greater impact without you jumping on board and helping me. And I feel that you are the community, so there'd be no point in me doing it on my own. So uh, any help is massively appreciated. Um, so that's it. Has that been useful before I go? Any, uh, any last comments? Before I um, before I call it a night. Thanks, Ross. Awesome chat as always. Says Carrie May. Pleasure. Thank you for being here. Massively appreciate you all. Um, I'm getting texts galore here from people. I can't see who they are. Um, not from Periscope. It's actually on my phone. It's one of the uh, downfalls of actually viewing your own Periscope on your own phone. Um, thank you, Girly Whirly's been here. Didn't know you were here as well. 
Mike's still here. Mike's hilarious on Instagram. Follow Mr. Mike Ant on Instagram. Legend. Very dry, witty, good lad. Likes a Prosecco um, and battles the gym on a daily basis. <laughs> but Mike, it's funny, man. <laughs> Keep doing it. I uh, I enjoy watching. Uh, that's awesome, then. I will uh, love you and leave you. For those on the audio experience or if you're watching the replay on um, on uh, YouTube or acts on this .tv, um, massively appreciate you as well. Um, great scope as usual, says Jen. Pleasure, Jen. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, uh, Carrie Ann. Appreciate you all. Um, it's great. We've got such a great community, and that's why I just like, man, we, you know, we've got to grow it. We've got to make this even bigger. Um, so until Wednesday, guys, thanks, basically. Hope that's useful. Remember those three points and never, ever rest on your laurels. I promise you, I'm going to be turning it up to 110. No, 11 is what they're doing it on the speaker when you're turning the volume up. I'm going to be turning it up to 11. All right, until Wednesday, enjoy your week. Hit me if I can do anything for you. Uh, love you and leave you. Bye for now. I'm a member and would love to help you out, says Gina. Gina, just spread the word. It's all I need from you. Everybody, hit me up. I want everyone to tweet me now with what they get out of Acts on this and if it's valuable to you, what your takeaway was from tonight's scope. Let's retweet, retweet, retweet. All right, bye for now. 